So we are right, and her timing is perfect because we're right at seven o'clock. I know we'll have more people joining as we get started, but we have so much to talk about tonight. So I'm pretty geeked up. And for those of you, if this is, so a couple disclaimers. First of all, if you are in the veterinary profession, uh, you need to put your pet hat on, your pet owner hat on, because this is for pet owners. I want to make sure everyone is aware of that as they're coming into the conversation. Our experts tonight will be in the chat helping answer any questions that you have, and I'm going to explain who they are here in a minute. Um, but I am Katherine Haskins, and I'm one of the co-founders of uh, the Bridge Club Pets. And Brenda, can you, well, say something too. Oh, hi, guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> we see actually created the Bridge Club as a means to be able to give pet owners the opportunity, I should say the Bridge Club Pets, we created that as an opportunity for pet owners to have real access to veterinary professionals to talk about things that are happening with their pets in a non-crisis situation because we all know we go into the clinic we're worried about how many teeth they've lost we're worried about they're licking too much they might be scratching something could be happening and sometimes we don't remember to ask a lot of questions and as i, I was joking with dr um bales this evening I, this is like your opportunity when you're on an airplane and you're sitting next to a veterinarian and you go ah, now I can ask all my questions. So that's what tonight is all about. But we're going to specifically, oh my God, Nikki. And Nikki Pat's you, trying sorry. to climb on top of her. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, this is like the worst thing you could do. We're like squirrel. Um, but we are here to talk about cats tonight and cat behavior. And so we are so excited because we are joined uh, by Dr. Amy Pike, who we'll fully introduce here in a minute. But we have two amazing, amazing professionals in the chat for you. The first is uh, Jessie, who is an LVT, so uh, shake your hand, there you go. So you will actually see her in the chat along. And so she works uh, with um, Dr. Amy in, in their practice um, with behavior. And then we have uh, Dr. Liz Bales, who's been in, so she's a DVM in practice for over 20 years. Oh no, she's a VMD. Oh, VMD, sorry, VMD, so sorry, sorry, so sorry. Got very excited there. Gotta get that um, U10 in there. <laughs> They have to be different. Exactly. They do have to be different. Um, but so she has been uh, in veterinary medicine for 20 years, but then has been focused on feline medicine and behavior. So we are so excited to have both of them here. So when you ask your questions in the chat, these guys will be helping answer them. So you're getting true uh, professionals. And um, uh, Dr. Bales, I am going to say uh, it is their professional responsibility to ensure that they are in fact providing you the right content. So we're really excited about that. Um, so what we are also going to do tonight is go through and have an incredible guest with us. So first of all, as a result of Memorial Day, I do want to advance uh, and say thank you so much, Dr. Amy Pike, for your service, because she did serve in the, the military as well. And in her career in the military, she worked with military working dogs. Um, she's also uh, owns her own practice in veterinary behavior. She is a uh, certified veterinary behaviorist, correct? Did I say that correct? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, and what is the name of your practice? The Animal Behavior Wellness Center. And where are you located? Uh, we have a, I'm located in Fairfax, but we have a practice location also in Richmond, Virginia. Which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, but she's been doing this for over 20 years. And so we, if we got questions, here's the people to be asking about our cats. Um, so before we get started, we have a tradition at the Bridge Club where we raise our glass and we start with a toast. So for those of you, whether it's LaCroix, uh, as I said to people earlier, I'm doing a little Chardonnay in honor of the cats. Um, raise your glass and I'm going to turn it over to Amy for her toast. Okay, perfect. So here's to all the cat owners and cat lovers that are out there. Uh, may our cats continue to allow us to live in their homes and may they not decide that we can be outsourced because as you know, dogs have owners and cats have staff. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Good one. Okay, that's a, a separate cutter there, uh, Brenda. Because mm -hmm. I think that one needs to go out immediately to everybody. I like that one. Perfect. Um, I should remind everybody, you had to give your permission when you came in. This is being recorded, so I want to be sure everyone knew that. So, um, Dr. Amy, we're going to dive into this, but I think, you know, people think behavior, they think of 
all kinds of things, right? Can you explain what kind of behavior you practice? Yeah, so um, I think people, when they hear the term behavior, they sort of automatically think of training, like sit um, down, you know, teaching cues. But really, I'm more like, as a boarded veterinary behaviorist, I'm more like a psychiatrist for pets. So it's less about training and more about changing the emotion associated with um, triggers. Well, that's kind of cool. So I'm sure immediately people are like, wait, what? So yeah. start throwing in the questions. <laughs> Automatically, <laughs> it's going to start blowing up right now. I just saw it start happening. So before we get into the fun, let's ask one of our fun questions where we're going to actually give away a book, shall okay. we? Which, uh, should we start with, and you have to make sure you're going to give the real answer. So everyone look in okay. your chat. Can we, can we talk about the book real quick? Oh, yeah. Talk about the book. Yeah. So I'm really excited. This is called Decoding Your Cat. Um, we, as a college, we made American College of Veterinary Behaviors. We created a book a couple of years ago called Decoding Your Dog. And now we have the cat version out because it was so popular. So I'm really excited. It comes out next week. Um, and so the Bridge Club has generously purchased some of these books and they're going to give them away. So Go ahead. Take, so take I'm going to ask the question, question, whoever gets it right, then I'm going to ask you to personally send me down at the bottom, send me your address. If not, I will send you my email so you can send me your address and I can send this to you. Um, so what age is a cat a super senior? Does anyone know what age? Oh, keep going. Oh, we're going so fast. I know. I know it's so, oh, oh first oh. one. Okay. Whoever iPhone is. Who is iPhone? iPhone, whoever iPhone is, you need to private message me. It is over 20, is a super senior. So way to go if you private message to Catherine, the Bridge Club, your address and your name besides iPhone. And then the I will send you this book. It was yes, iPhone. that is you, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> there were two iPhones, go. so make I'm sure go. I'm gonna go, yes, yes, that is you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay, so with that question, that's a fun one. We'll have a couple of those during this. We have a couple of fun questions that we're gonna ask as we're going along. So let's hit the really hard question really quick here. Oops, my notes. How can, we how can our cats tell us if something is wrong? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I get this question quite a bit from my clients because the first thing that they will see in a cat, in their cat, if something is wrong, is a change in behavior. So um, I always say any change in behavior is medical until proven otherwise. Behavior is truly a rule out diagnosis. So you, if you see a change in behavior of your cat, they start to hiss more, they start to hide more, they poop or pee outside the litter box, they become more aggressive, any of that type of stuff. You definitely wanna seek care from your veterinarian because it could be a medical issue um, first and foremost. Okay, wow. I think uh, that's, I'm already seeing, we're gonna have questions on different things here. But let's go into what are the top concerns in all of what you receive mm -hmm. uh, from pet owners that are constantly coming forward? What are the top three concerns that cost constantly come forward? Uh, the first one is definitely pooping and peeing outside the litter box. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's an intolerable behavior from the, <laughs> from the human standpoint. Um, aggression towards either people or other pets in the household. And then um, wanting to introduce a new cat and not really knowing how to go about it. So there was automatically a question in here. I do want to like, what happened? What is your cat saying to you if they stop suddenly eating the food that they had been eating? What does that say? Well, first of all, that definitely could be medical. Um, it could be dental pain. It could be stomach GI issues. Um, so that is definitely something that needs to be seen by a veterinarian. Wow. That's kind of, I just suddenly might. So this is, this is how like all of a sudden I get diverted. It's, it, it's again, <laughs> well. like, going over. So let's talk litter box. Okay. There's, there's a couple. One in set, uh, is talking about, um, you know, if my cat is suddenly eliminating outside of the litter box, what does that actually mean? Yeah, so remember, sudden change in behavior, medical until proven otherwise. So it could be something like a urinary tract infection, kidney disease, diabetes, very common issues in cats. Um, if it's defecating or pooping outside the litter box, at that almost, I would say 99% of the time, if the cat is pooping outside the litter box, it is definitely a medical issue. It's very rarely behavioral. Um, so then we need to figure out 
what is the, like if we rule out a medical issue, then we have to figure out what the reason for the behavior is occurring now, because we're, you know, again, backed into this behavior corner. So have there been any changes in the household to cause stress? Um, did they add or take away any of the cat members or even human members? Um, has there been changes in the litter box itself? Did they change the number of boxes available, type of box? Uh, maybe they got a new box. Maybe they ch changed the litter type because it was you know, cheaper at the grocery store that week or whatever. Um, so if there's any sort of changes, and then once we figure out was there some sort of sort of impetus to this um, you know, stress-induced behavior, then we have to figure out how we're gonna get the cat back to using the box, which is sort of a whole list of how we go about that um, in terms of trying to sort of retrain them to use the litter box. Wow. So can you give us one tip of how you yeah. retrain them to use the yeah. litter box? So one of the things we can do is actually um, do what I call offer a litter box cafeteria. So put out four to five different litter boxes, all of the same style perhaps, but maybe four to five different litter types and see which one the cat prefers to use. So in the cafeteria, which one does it, you know, is it using more consistently the clay clumping litter? Is it using the one with the scent added granules? You know, ask the cat basically the question, which box do you prefer? And that's kind of the first step. And, and just purely because they're pooping and peeing in the box, that's how you know that that's the box they prefer. There won't that's be any other voting. That's how they vote. that they would show. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How many litter boxes should a person have in their house? Very good question. So on average, it's the number of cats you have plus one, but that is if you only had a one story house. So you have to have multiple litter boxes on each floor of the home um, and make sure that they're easily accessible to the cats as well. So it's a rule of thumb, but it's not hard and fast. Wow, but that's kind of that's kind of fun. So I would like to see who has the largest number of cats in this audience. So can people put in there the largest number will also get a book? I just thought that would be a fun number. So yeah. okay, let's see who are um Okay, seven. Okay, I thought that was 17 boxes. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> gonna throw me off. Five. Okay. This is confidential. I love that. But I, think, I think five might be the highest. Am I this seeing is that? The no correctly? judgment zone. Yeah, no judgment zone. Okay, so uh, who had the five? Who's six. I saw. I Sophia, six. if you, is that the highest number? Five? No, six. Just Jocelyn? Is there, is there six? Where is there a six? Oh, Jocelyn has six. So Jocelyn uh, Durenberger, if you will private message okay. either Brenda or myself, we will get you that book um, with your address because that is awesome. That's too fun. I just thought it's a fun look. Oh my gosh, but Karen has three moms and 14 kittens. Oh, oh well then, Karen, do the same. We'll get you a book too. Yeah, I think she <laughs> deserves a book too. I think the fact she's got all the babies. like a lot of work. Yes. That seems like a lot, yes. a lot of work. So I think we'll yeah. give her one too. But don't Probably worry, we're gonna give away. <laughs> we're we're gonna give away more books. Don't worry uh, as we go through this. So let's hit aggression. Wow. So someone brought up in the chat earlier because it's already blowing up uh, the idea that they have a dog, but when they go to pet their cat, their cat bites them. So let's talk about different levels of aggression, but answer that question first and then we'll. Yeah. So for that, I mean, there could be several different reasons why that particular cat is um, biting them. It could be number one, that they don't want to be petted. Um, many cats sort of tolerate our human physical interaction. Um, and some actually don't enjoy it, especially depending on where you are touching them. Um, so the best place to scratch a cat is kind of at the side here, or maybe like around the whiskers. Some like it on the back of the head, but not always. Um, the other thing that could be is you may smell like the dog. And so cats are very smell sensitive. And so if you smell like the dog and he's like, you know what, I don't like that dog. Um, when you're touching me and you now smell like the dog, maybe that's what's causing the issue. So other aggression, is it the same thing? Could it be an odor issue? Could it be those things? Or talk to us about like what other yeah. type of aggression do you see? Yeah, so it's all rooted in fear, anxiety, and stress. So even the smell thing is all about fear. I'm scared of the dog and, and don't like that dog. It makes me anxious. Um, so it could be a smell thing. It could be, um, you know, they're scared of strangers and strangers approach them. It could be, I'm scared of handling. And so then we pick the cat up and it 
you know, claws you to try and get away. So there are all kinds of reasons for aggression, but ultimately it's all based in fear and anxiety. So how do you approach a cat? Let's give another tip. I love the, the scratching under here and keeping it, you know, really uh, soft. What other advice would you give to pet owners or cat owners in particular, if you've got an aggressive cat, how can they approach them? Because if they want them to be lovey-dovey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes it is really coming to terms with the fact that they may not necessarily want what we want from the human standpoint, um, but we can use food to our advantage. So like high value food items, like some cats like um, salmon or little um, shrimp, you know, like that kind of thing. So if you put down the shrimp next to you and they want to come over and get it, then they're going to help, that's going to help associate you with positive things. Um, but ultimately we need to be respectful of them as well. And if they don't want to be petted, um, you know, no means no ladies. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the introduction of a new cat. So yeah. Dr. Bales is getting a new cat. She doesn't count because this is what she does uh, day to day. But in general, as people are looking at bringing in that, uh, that new cat, what is it that they can do to help that introduction? And especially, you know, this uh, Jocelyn's got the six little babies, right? So she's going to, whether she's fostering that, like however that's working, but how do you introduce a new cat? Yeah, so the biggest thing that you want to do is take it slow. Um, I cannot stress taking it slow enough um, because the slower that we go, the better off it's going to be ultimately. So if you think you've gone long enough of introduction, you haven't gone long enough, right? So keep going. So the first thing is you want to make sure that each cat has a new, has its own territory because territory is huge for a cat. They, they want their own space, their own living zone. You kind of have to think about it as like, um, we're the college and we're picking the, room, the dorm mates, right? They don't necessarily get to choose each other. And so we have to take that into account too. make sure that we um, make sure they have their own space, their own bed, their own food, water, all that kind of stuff. And then we use um, scent, th like creating a common scent profile, basically, where you pet one cat, and then you go and pet an the other cat, and then you end up back on the first cat so that now the two cats smell the same. So again, oh. that scent is huge for cats, right? So um, you definitely want to make sure that they smell alike. Then we actually use what we call food therapy, where if one cat is, say, in a bedroom and the other cat is in the hallway, we feed the cats on either side of the door so that we're associating them with really good things. Like if they, um, you know, get a little dollop of canned food or even like you know, just some tuna, canned tuna, something like that. And then the other thing we can do is uh, what we call play therapy, where we create a toy um, that has uh, like a, a ribbon or some sort of safe string rope, something like that, that goes underneath the door with the one cat's favorite toy tied to one end and the other cat's favorite tie toy tied to the other so that they can play back and forth underneath the door with one another. So that's what we oh. call our play therapy. That's and do they, do they end up, I'm, I'm sorry, like, do they really engage? Will they find themselves just because? Oftentimes they there? will. Yeah, absolutely. So you brought up the food therapy. So I think this is a great time. So everyone take a, a breather from your questions from one second and let's see how <laughs> many of you can answer. The first person I should say, let's be real careful. <laughs> the first person to tell me how many meals, make sure I'm wording this right. Should a cat eat a day or eats a day? How many meals does the, the average cat eat in the wild if given on their own? Okay. So not because, you know, we feed them, right? Like in we the put wild. their bowl down. Okay. So if they so were on their own in the wild, how many meals would they eat? Okay. So Lori and Carol, Lori had 10, Carol had 12. That's and exactly Kurt, right. 10 to Kurt, 12. You don't count. You were, you were on the wrong end. You were on the wrong end. I know Kurt well, so I can say that to him. Um, <laughs> so, I, so I think Lori and I think, and the 12, where was the 12? Who had the 12, did I say? There were a couple of 12s. Carol. So Lori and tw uh, Carol had it first. Yep. Pia, uh, send us private messages. Brenda, yep. again, Brenda or Catherine, your private email address, and we will send you um, this book. And by the way, for the record, the book doesn't come out until July, so yep. it won't show up tomorrow. It'll, it'll be right when it's June. released. June. Comes out June. June. June, sorry. Which, by the okay. way, for a couple of days. Uh, yeah, a couple yeah. weeks. <laughs> Which is absolutely insane. Oh, Nikki, it's called decoding it. your cat. 
Oh, sorry. Yes. Decoding your cat. I saw that in the chat. Oh I told yeah. you guys this would blow up. You didn't believe Did it. Did I? Gosh, Dr. Amy, you're like talking, you're watching the chat. It, just, like, it keeps popping up. So I'm so used to um, multitasking. I'm a mom. Yeah. 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 There you go. Okay. So let's talk about how to make our cats more social. A couple okay. questions on how do I, you know, oh, I'm sorry. No, wait. Ezra just asked this one. It caught my attention. What do you do when you accidentally trip over your cat? <laughs> hey, sorry. Uh, yeah, hope hope for the best and say you're sorry. <laughs> Make sure they're not injured. Make sure they're not injured. Apologize. Yes, good one, Cindy. Um, okay, so how do we get our cats to be more social? Is that is that what you want to yeah, be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your answer. Okay, so um, I kind of talked about it a little bit more, a little bit about the like, how do we get them to be okay with like being petted. Um, so using that high value food item. So let, let's say we want them to be more social with our guests. You can certainly um, feed them in the area where, um, you know, people are hanging out in the living room. You could put them on their cat tower with like some high value stuff like tuna or salmon or whatever. Um, and then the other thing is making sure that you are your cat's advocate so that if they don't want to be petted by people, they just want to be admired and adored from afar, um, that you make sure that the, um, your guests are compliant with that. I wish that my husband would like leave little high value things around for me to like right. go hunt and find, right? You know, like little diamond <laughs> earrings here, there, and everywhere. Oh my God. Would that not be the best? That would whenever, be the best. whenever you say that, Dr. Amy, we've, we've had Dr. Amy on before too. When, whenever she says high value, I'm, I'm literally pic picturing like little diamond earrings, little bracelet <laughs> in there, maybe a nice scarf. What an amazing marriage that would be though, right? Brenda, like how much would you love your husband? Oh my gosh, it would be. I, he, he really ought to listen to this after for, the For my husband, he'd like the high value gifts to be a golf club here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bottle like of whiskey. A little whiskey, yeah. So, so let's talk about, let's pivot just a section because I saw yeah. this come up is how often, let's do it by ages, right? How often should a cat see their vet? So let's oh, go kitten. Let's go question you know, great, super senior. Talk to us about the eight, like yeah. how often should a cat see their veterinarian? So for the, I think it's going to be the most at either end of the spectrum, right? You're going to see your veterinarian most when the uh, cats are kittens and when they are seniors, because um, the majority of the issues happen on either of those. So for the kittens, it's definitely important to get through that vaccine series. Um, and, you know, that's going to be every three to four weeks for the first, you know, several months of the cat's um, life. Then if they're not spayed or neutered, they're going to have to be spayed or neutered, you know, anywhere between five to seven months, depending on the veterinarian. Um, and then it's generally recommended to see, see your vet at least twice a year. Um, cats are very, very stoic and oftentimes we don't catch things early enough and the sooner we catch disease processes, especially kidney disease, the better off that they're going to be um, long term. So seeing them at least every six months um, for a well visit and checkup and or blood work. And then when they're seniors, they definitely need to have blood work at least every six months during that time frame. So um, not only are they getting examined, but they're getting full labs as well. No, I like that one. I like that one. So let's, let's do some advice to everybody. Let's okay. give them some tips, right? Because that's one of the reasons that we hope people come to the Bridge Club is they're actually learning something of great value. Yeah. So let's get some training tips. A okay. uh, lot of conversation first about how do you get them to go where you don't want them to go. I saw aluminum foil in here. Like you mm -hmm. don't want them on the counter. You don't want to. So what, what are the things that you should do there? Yeah, so I mean, you can make those places sort of inhospitable. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're not putting any of their food up there. You're not trying to feed them on the kitchen counter, but then you expect them not to go on the kitchen counter other times. So um, I have had people put like aluminum foil on there, etc. I don't recommend any of the like products that are um, kind of like the compressed air or the um, uh, scat mats where it's like a little shock just because that can really scare the cat and and really kind of damage your relationship with them. Um, but you want to teach them the positive behavior, right? Like, I don't want you to do this. What do I want you to do instead? And so we recommend using um, clicker training or marker training. So this is a clicker, if you haven't seen one before. This is my favorite piece of training equipment on the face of the planet. This is all you will need plus treats. Um, so if you can hear it, 
It's literally just a click. And think of this as like a camera and you are taking a picture of the behavior that you are going to reward the pet for. So like for my cat, let's say, her little uh, back end touches the, um, the ground. So she's doing a sit, I mark, and then I reward her. So I give her a high value treat um, to teach her that this, when you hear this, Good things are coming, but I want to see more of that behavior because you get rewarded for it. So that's how long does it take for them to um, align to the click? Super, super quick. So um, one of the things that we recommend initially doing is doing what we are uh, doing what we say is called charging the clicker, where I basically stand in front of the cat and I go click treat, click treat, ah. click treat, and I do that about ten times. The cat will now know, I hear that click, I get a treat, it's coming. Um, in fact, I think one of my dogs and my cat are actually outside the door right now because I hear the clicker. <laughs> and they're like, where's the treat? Man? I know, they're like, hello, mom, are we training? What's going on? Um, so actually my daughter taught, and I was hoping that, that she would come in here, um, that my cat would come in here to show you, but my daughter taught her cat to fist bump. So she puts out her what? fist and the cat paws her. And she clicks and rewards her for that. So it's super cute, super fun. That is so, so cool. Okay, so I didn't realize it's as easy as that. If you're doing the click, you mm -hmm. give a treat, you get like it, yeah. and you do it repeatedly. So yeah. what kind of food though? So cats can be persnickety. Yes. They can be a little bit picky. Plus they have tiny stomachs, right? We talked about they eat 10 to 12 meals per day if, if given to their own devices. Um, and so we have to be very, very particular when it comes to trainings. You have to find what they will be willing to work for. Um, some cats like whipped cream, like just, you know, regular whipped cream. They love to work for that. Yeah. Sorry, Jocelyn is just feeding her cat on the screen right now. So I had a little- Oh, like, that's, moment, awesome. That's, so that's awesome. That's awesome. But whipped cream? Whipped cream. Um, we use in the clinic, we use these little tubes of food called Inaba Churus. Um, and you can find them on Amazon. Um, baby food, um, tuna. We, we even use dry dehydrated shrimp that you actually use for um, uh, fish tanks. Um, and we use those sometimes as treats as well. But you have to figure out what the cat is willing to work for because not every cat um, is different, or I mean, every cat is different, right? So they won't all work for the same thing. Well, I love that Jesse just put in there, make sure they have lots of different flavors, lots of different textures. So you're finding out where they, and can they change their mind? Can they be like a woman and change their mind? Absolutely. <laughs> Although most, most cats do develop preferences very early on as kittens. Um, and so it's generally uh, whatever they will have had when they were kittens that they will like later on. Oh my goodness. Okay, so for our final question tonight, we're, we're getting this. Okay, so we have to make sure I'm saying this correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, get ready, everybody. First person who answers it correctly, and I don't know the answer, so you guys have to tell me the answer. So what percent of a cat's waking hours does a cat spend hunting for food? What percentage of a cat's waking hours are spent hunting for food? Oh. Holy criminies, people. Okay, wait. So, <laughs> so hang on. Oh, Adam. Adam got it at 80%, right? Is yeah, that correct? Adam. Way to go, Adam. We had 85. Sorry, s and <laughs> it's, it's 80. So make sure you guys are uh, definitely private messaging myself if I have called out your name or Brenda Andreessen. I'm sorry, and Brenda, the other co-founder, to make sure that we are giving out the books to you all. But I do have, I do have one more question. I, I can't help myself. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to see if Brenda knows the answer to this. I don't know if Brenda does because okay. she's, she's a dog owner. Get ready, Brenda. Ready? Okay. Uh, so why do cats meow at night, ruling out medical issues? Because they want to be a pain in the caboose. <laughs> <laughs> Why do cats meow at night? Do you guys know? Ah, Vanita, I hope I pronounced that correct. Vanita, yep. you are correct. They are hunting. hunting. They are absolutely hunting. They have been, uh, it's in their DNA to hunt. So that is why they are hunting. They spend the majority. And Jocelyn, your cat is making me so happy. It's not even not funny. Her. So, cats, um, I mean, cats spend a huge amount of their time hunting. And so when we feed them two meals a day, 
what are they going to do with the rest of their time, right? They're going to wake us up all night long. So one of my favorite products, and I'll just plug it because she's here um, and she has taken the time to enjoy, uh, join us this evening, but Dr. Liz Bales um, invented Doc and Phoebe's cat um, indoor hunting system. Am I saying that right, Liz? Ooh. Whatever, Dr. Well, Dr. Phoebe. Uh, maybe maybe Jesse or Brenda can put that link in so yes, the people please, can the link in. explain what it is. Doc and Phoebe is amazing. It is awesome. It's okay. basically these little mice that you fill with their food or treats and you hide them and the cat can hunt. So that's my daughter's absolute favorite thing. Every single night she feeds her little or she fills her little mice um, and hides them all over the house so that Dobby can hunt all night and she is yeah. not disturbing us in any way shape or form it's awesome i told you all we had a celebrity she's on qvc i mean come on this yeah. is kind of cool like as we're looking at it like where's oh i was just with someone who was on qvc that's no big deal what else what else <laughs> how'd you spend your night i was with qvc it's great that's literally my dream job by the way i put the link to, just to be the host not to sell not to be the person inventor like you but to just sell something okay let's talk about a really serious issue because this is important um, we've all been housebound mm. and we are creating our own stress. We're all uh, very anxious and trying to get back to life as normal. What are we doing to our cats? Yeah, I think some of our cats are definitely wondering, um, what we did to get fired or, you know, what <laughs> exactly we're doing at home all the time. Um, I know my cat is super, super happy because my daughter is home 24 seven and she is loving it. But I think there's some cats that are not happy about it. Um, so trying to keep to your routine as much as possible, um, definitely making sure that you spend some time away each day from the, ho from the home um, to really remind our pets, whether it be a dog or a cat, that we do in fact leave the house without them. Um, and making sure that we uh, are not um, overly affectionate all of the time because they're, like I said, some cats are just a little bit more introverted than others and they don't want the constant um, stream of affection. Um, but you could definitely spend your time usefully and learn how to clicker train your cat. Um, there's all kinds of fun videos out there on how to um, clicker train various uh, tricks and um, all kinds of fun stuff. So um, definitely keep yourselves active, their mind as, your, as well as your mind active. So let's talk about what some of those tips are because I think people forget to play with their cats. Yeah. Um, and what does that actually look like? Yeah, so lots of options for play. I mean, obviously the hunting, um, like the Doc and Phoebe's, is a sort of play on their own. So it's simulating that uh, hunt, hunt need. Um, some cats like laser pointers. Um, I always recommend with a laser pointer that you end with a treat because some cats actually will get frustrated if they can't finish their hunting sequence um, because they're, you know, they're stalking and they're, um, they're hunting and then they catch and there's nothing to catch because the laser pointer goes away. Um, so you always want to end with a treat with laser pointers. Um, there are robotic mice that you can control from an app on your phone um, that are super fun. You can, um, the cat can chase them all throughout the house. There's feather um, wands and toys, all kinds of stuff. But really mental stimulation in the form of training is one of my favorite ways um, to play with kitties. Because if you think about how tiring you are after you use your brain, um, versus your body, you know, you can go for a run and you're all jazzed, right? But if you sit down at a desk and really think about your, like, taxes for an hour, you're exhausted. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're getting some mental stimulation in there for them. So I just have to, uh, before Brenda asks you uh, two questions, I do have to tell you, I just was saying what, what questions are boiling up and Jesse goes, they're happening so fast, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> or so, just so so Brenda's got Brenda's got two as we're as we're bringing those forward. There've been so many good ones, but I have to say I'm pulling out some of the ones that I think are a little more unique and interesting, perhaps. So, um, so okay. So Dr. Amy, one of our one of our attendees has a cat who goes to one specific spot in the house and then meows like crazy. What the heck? <laughs> So, I mean, there could be so many different things that go on. Um, it could have been that they're, they can hear a noise in that area. Like maybe, I've actually had um, 
owners bring their cats in because they're staring at a wall. Turns out they had mice in their, in their wall. Oh. Um, you know, so maybe that's it. It could be that they hear people outside from that spot. It could be that that behavior has been rewarded in the past, meaning you've paid attention to the cat. And so now they know that if I go to that spot and I meow enough at you, um, you'll actually come and pay attention to me. So there's so many different reasons. I kind of like everything but the mice in the walls. And so yeah. I kind of with yeah. you, that scares the crap out of me. I'm not I know. Them. Okay, and now this is really hard because there have really been so many very interesting ones. So I'm going to ask one that, that probably applies to, to more people. And then if there's time, I'll ask a couple of the really fun, funky ones that I'm just dying to know the answer to. <laughs> but, the, but the one that I think will apply to a lot of people is like the tail. Like, you know, what are the different oh, locations of the tail mean yeah. and what should we yeah. watch for? Yeah, so my favorite um, position for the tail is that up question, looks like a question mark. And that means that the cat is willing to interact with you. They're curious, they're explorative, they're definitely willing to approach. Um, now, if the tail is tucked, that's a fearful cat. Um, if you notice a cat lying down and they are doing this little flick with their tail, like it's just a very quick little flick, that means the, a bite is about to potentially happen. Oh. <laughs> Don't interact with that cat. They're pretty upset. <laughs> um, so all kinds of reasons, but that question mark is what you want to look for for a nice, happy, So that's the um, time to approach cat. with the little scratch to go, you're cool exactly. for me. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I like that. Okay. What was okay. one of the other ones, Brenda? All right. So this one I think is just incredibly interesting. So one of our one of our attendees has a cat that likes to be spanked. <laughs> now I know this is a family show, but I couldn't resist. We need to go there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just so <laughs> no, I get it. So I mean, there are definitely some dogs and cats that just you know prefer to just kind of have that you know nice harder um, you know butt pat. Um, and I assume they're probably not spanking them in a bad way, right? Because nobody wants a, a bad spank, a punishment spank. Um, but that's probably just a personal preference. Yeah. I have a dog that likes that too. He would prefer I just kind of like, you know, bang on him rather than just like scratch him. Give him a thwack. Yeah. So that was, I thought, the most interesting one of all. But I think another like good one that is really worth asking is self-comforting activities for cats. I mean, is licking... Yeah. Yes. Obsessively self-comforting. I mean, obviously there are different kinds of things. So what, what's a good self-comfort and what is cause for concern? Well, so again, any new behavior, um, if it's a brand new thing, we need to make sure we're ruling out a medical issue. So see your veterinarian. Um, but cats will often groom, them, groom themselves as a way to um, displace their anxiety. Okay. So they may also like scratch. They, um, you know, if they're licking excessively though, like to the point of bald patches and causing damage themselves, that is definitely something that you need to see your veterinarian for because that is a cause for concern. Again, it could be medical, but if it's behavioral, there's some significant stress there that, that needs to be addressed. Okay. I'm assuming that applies to someone just said, what about licking a plastic bag? I'm assuming that's an anxiety. It could stress. be. Yeah, it also could be GI. Um, some cats that have what we call pica, meaning they eat things that they shouldn't, like inanimate objects, um, plastic rings, um, hair ties. That actually could be underlying GI, like inflammatory bowel syndrome. So right. what about like, so again, now we're on the firing squad section of the, you know, the conversation <laughs> where it's just like, tell us about this, tell us about that. Um, stop, to get a, a, a cat to stop scratching the furniture. Oh, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, so again, another behavior that the humans don't like. Um, so cats will scratch furniture um, for a couple different reasons. They will scratch to um, condition their claws to get rid of the, like the outer um, layers of the claw. Um, they will scratch to stretch. So it's a really easy way to stretch up your arms and to stretch your body like that. Um, but they also uh, scratch to mark territory. And so if we can um, create other ways for them to mark territory, including um, having like a cat scratching post right at that location, um, you can cover your furniture with like, um, I've had people do like tin foil. I prefer double um, sided sticky tape. Um, to kind of keep the cat away from the inappropriate things. I saw Jesse earlier uh, mention something about Fila Scratch in the chat. I love Fila Scratch. The only problem here in the U.S. is it is going off the market. Um, Fila Scratch is a pheromone product basically that attracts the cat to a, a scratching post to um, encourage them to scratch on that. 
The other thing you want to make sure is that the cat has, you know, enough other areas in the household territory wise, because a lot of these guys are marking their territory because they're stressed because of inner cat conflict. Um, so making sure that they have lots of territory um, options within um, the household. So let's talk, well, other than the fact that aside from toilet paper, you just suddenly had everyone do a run on all the, le the remaining. Uh, <laughs> Feel a scratch. Yeah. 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 So yeah. now that you've just done that. I know. Um, but let's talk a, a little bit about the pheromones. Let's talk yeah. about what it does for the cats and what people can be doing, et cetera. Yeah, good question. So the um, two pheromone products that are still in the market and that I use um, quite frequently are Feel Away, and they call that Feel Away Classic. Um, this is the original Feel Away pheromone. It's what cats uh, deposit in their environment when they rub their whiskers on it or what bunt is as the word for that. Um, and so they are marking their territory as a means to say, I am here um, and I have been here. And so it's the process of marking their territory that helps them feel more comfortable, but also coming upon that pheromone later in their environment to say, ah, this is comfortable and familiar. So the Feel Away Classic is the uh, sort of um, synthetic version of that facial pheromone. Um, you want to put the Feel Away Classic in areas of shared territory between cats. So where they're going to cross each other's paths, food and water, uh, litter boxes, rusting spots, that kind of thing. Um, and then the other one that is fairly new to the market is called um, Multicat, uh, Feel Away Multicat. And this is the maternal appeasing pheromone that mother cats produce when they're nursing their kittens. And it has kind of a calming relaxation property to it and it allows everybody to just kind of relax and nurse. Um, the reason it's called Multicat is um, that you, it's not that you can't use it in a single cat household. It actually can work very well in a single cat household, but the studies done here in the U.S. Um, showed a significant improvement in inner cat aggression when they use that pheromone. So. Ooh, so that's a perfect one. We just had somebody ask well, how you get two independently sweet cats who can't stand each other to like each other. So it sounds like you just answered that question. Yeah, you can definitely try the multi-cat. And, um, you know, medication may be um, in order depending on the kitty. Um, so definitely talk to your veterinarian about that or, um, you know, see a veterinary behaviorist like myself. So I'm, I just saw it pop up and it made me realize that I do want to ask this question iPads. So you saw a lot of games oh, suddenly yeah. come out for cats, etc. Yeah. Tell us about like, do those work? Are they really a value? Yeah, some cats really, really love them. Um, I think it's kind of just like the um, the laser pointer, though. Some cats can get frustrated because they can never actually catch it. Um, but like, I always tell people whether when are they using the iPad or like the, um, the laser pointer definitely end with some sort of food reward so that there's completing that sequence. So we do have a couple of people. Why is that? Why is the uh, feel of scratch going off the market? It just wasn't as popular here as it was in, in Europe, unfortunately. So oh, well, UK. if everyone had bought it. I know. <laughs> I bought a ton. Don't worry. <laughs> I was doing my part. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So let's look if we've got other questions that are popping up before we, because we always promise to like get us where you keep wanting more that we're not going on and using up your entire evening as we're going for it. Oh we're my God. Gonna, I can talk for like uh, 30 oh hours gosh. straight about cats. So Brenda, is there any additional question that we need to pop up in here or should we start to begin to wrap it up? Here's a real good one I think we should ask as we're talking about, um, you know, the feel away. Um, is there any negative interaction with dogs? Do people who have cats and dogs need to worry about that in their household? Oh, super no, no, they're not cross-reactive, um, those pheromones. So that's the nice thing is even if you have dogs, you can use the feel away pheromones and vice versa. Good. Perfect. Safety that. first. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. Okay, so do we have one? I'm trying to see, do we have one more question for the cats? I don't think we did, otherwise I'd give away one more. Can you think of one really quick, Dr. Amy? Um, name a non-shedding breed of cat. Ooh. Oh. Can you name, oh, so. Sphinx, okay. Is that right? Not the bald ones, but what about the haired ones? Oh. A Rex. That's right. Yeah. So oh, Devin, okay. Devin okay. So Leslie Texas. gets it. Yeah. I love her. I mean, the bald ones obviously don't shed either. <laughs> I, I love her confidence. Rex question mark? Rex, Rex question mark? 
Yeah. Like, I'm not quite sure. So, yeah. so Leslie, send me your contact information and then we'll definitely make sure that. Oh, and if you've it. never heard of a Rex, Linda, you are missing out. We have my own personal cat is a Devon Rex and our clinic cats are Devon Rexes and they are delightful. Oh my gosh. So how do you, can, I don't think this is, can you ask this? How what? can you get your cat from shedding? You can't. No, I mean, you can brush them more often. Um, that will help. There is um, a new food that I'm super excited to learn more about. Yeah. It's brand new on the market. Weren't we just talking about this, Catherine? Yeah, you were. And so yeah. I know nothing, and, and we may have to unmute Dr. Uh, Bales for this because she may know I know more. just about as much um, as nothing. But basically, it, you feed it to the cat to make them less um, allergenic to you as the human. So it's just out by Purina. I'm really anxious to look at more um, more research about that, but it seems super cool. It's going to be kind of like kale, though, probably, right? I mean, <laughs> maybe. Products, but we really don't. You know, we're going to be like, cool. really? Yeah. yeah. Very so well. Sucker strikes coming from many cats across the United States. Okay, so we will ask one, you know, uh, uh, sticky. Uh, conversation and then we'll let's talk a little bit about raw diets let's okay. talk about what cats eat and is raw diet a part of it yeah uh, so, so talk to us about that yeah so i mean cats are um obligate carnivores so they need a lot of protein um they do have some you know they they will eat some um vegetables and grains and that kind of thing so they're not you know they don't a hundred percent have to just have protein. I'm not a fan of raw diets. I'll be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Most veterinarians that you talk to are not just for the big issue of disease transmission. So we cannot control what is, um, you know, being processed at the processing plant. How many humans come down with salmonella every year because of, you know, chicken or raw foods um, that aren't cooked right. Um, and certainly your cats can get that as well. Um, not to mention that if they are shedding any of these organisms, they can be a transmitter to people, um, children, and immunocompromised and that kind of thing. So not a, not a big fan of, um, of the raw foods. That's very interesting as yeah. we're looking at it. I saw one other one that came up here. Um, oh, Dr. Bales has the research. I love it. You need to unmute her. Oh, oh wait, here we go. I'm going to oh. unmute. Okay. I'm going to unmute you. Here we go. Get ready. She's a scientist. You are <laughs> unmuted. Go. Uh-oh. Yes, I have been imbibing. Um, so, <laughs> so the Purina diet uh, is in the GI tract, the diet enzymes bind to the protein called FELD1. And FELD1 is actually, should I say it's a GI tract? I'm not sure it's the GI tract, but it binds to the protein FELD1, which is what is in the saliva of the cat that they then lick themselves. The FELD1 is what makes human beings have an allergic reaction. Oh, okay. so when the elements of the diet bind to the FELD1, then it changes the composition of that chemical so that it doesn't affect human beings. Um, and so far, I think it's working at my house. Oh, oh really? Oh. I didn't know. So, a little secret. I'm allergic and my daughter's allergic. And oh. we just itch. Um, and I think it's helping. That's awesome. Okay, so interesting. How long did it take for you to notice? Now, recognizing everyone needs to talk to their veterinarian, everyone needs to go through all that. But how long did you notice before you noticed a change? Not long, like a week and a half, <laughs> two weeks. Oh, huge. But yeah, it's quick. It was quick for us. That's so the kale is worth it. Okay, that's yeah. good. And there's also, they're working on it. I, and you might know who this is. Someone's working on a vaccine that is meant to, um, to uh, have cats stop producing feld one I don't really know much about that. And I think it's not ready for the market. Mm -hmm. But Purina, you can get it. I got mine at Chewy.com. Delivered right to my door. So <laughs> he doesn't love that. So, so for the record, no one is sponsoring this. These are authentic <laughs> yes, statements so. that are coming out I'll here. Have, this is not, not so, yeah. so it does That's give awesome. me a reason to go to Purina <laughs> and have a conversation with them. But this is fantastic. This absolutely is exactly why. Oh, what's it called? Yeah, I don't remember what it's called either. Nouns you people want. Hold on, let me, I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> and then be able to Google it, right? Yeah, and, and yes, and both Brenda and I are big fans of Chewy, so uh, only because I'm too lazy to go to the pet store. I was going to say, anything that makes my life easier and I'm not oh, carrying the night out, right? Yes. 
And all I'm going to say is the first Christmas card I get every year is from Chewy before Chewy. I get it from anyone else. Anyone else. Yeah. It's always Chewy. So I do appreciate that. We are, you guys, yeah. we are at the end. Well, Dr. Bales is trying to find this. We uh, are at the end. Pro plan, uh, easy for me to say, pro plan, live clear. Ooh, uh, and I pro just plan, live clear. Up. She just typed it in there so you all have it. And yeah. it's not prescription? No. Fantastic. Uh, all right. right. Yeah. Talk to your veterinarian if it's best for, for your pet based Absolutely. on what your pet's health uh, conditions are. And then if it works for your family, I think that is fantastic. That Love is it. probably number six of the fantastics uh, this night. If you have been on with us early. Drinking game. It, it has to be a drink. How many times can Catherine say the word fantastic? Um, so you guys, with this, we are going to do a parting shot here from uh, Dr. Amy. Uh, oh and my goodness, Dr. Any... Alona Rodan is on here. Can we just say hello? Hello. <laughs> Dr. Is, she most here? is she on here? Amazing feline veterinarians on the face of the planet. Okay. Where is she? I don't see. Where is she? Yeah, she got turned on the camera. the chat. Maybe. Where is she? Oh, there she is. I see is her picture. You Hi, should Alona. Alona. Me. Okay. Dr. Well, Dr. Dan, one of my idols. A lot of our favorite cats. So please here. explain who she is so she gets a little call out here so people She is a feline veterinarian and one of like the premier feline veterinarians in the entire world. She uh, lectures everywhere. <laughs> so amazing. all we'll say is uh, then all of a sudden if we get corrected because she goes, nope, that's not right. <laughs> That's not going to happen, but we, because we have the best of the best on this, which is fantastic. Um, okay, so we are now at the end, guys. We want to make sure that you all have had a great experience. I'm going to post in here in two seconds uh, the actual survey. If you could give us your feedback on this survey of uh, your experience, that would be fantastic because we want to continue to bring you incredible conversations and content uh, that means the world to you. So as we, I'm going to quickly, Brenda, I'm quickly pulling it up. So keep filling okay. the dead space as I keep talking. Okay. Yeah. So please do let us know when, when, when you send, when Catherine sends a survey, fill it out, let us know how you liked it, but also let us know what other things you would like to hear. We've got um, the Bridge Club Pets has a Facebook page and you can post some topics on there or just put them in the chat at the end of this conversation and um, we'll hang on a little bit longer and make sure to collect all those things up so we can be talking about the kinds of things that you guys want to know about. And we are fortunate. Catherine and I have a wide collection of friends who are phenomenal veterinary professionals and experts in so many areas. So it's really fun to be able to connect the people we know with the people who need the information that they have. But we promise, so I'm not fast enough to find that link. So I will send it to each one of you um, so that you have the link handy. Um, and we'd love all your feedback, but we're gonna also send you all the video so that you'll be able to go through and get all the, um, if you're like, oh, I missed that one piece. I wanna make sure I get the, the information on it. And then we will also have on our website every single question broken out so that it'll be easy for you guys to reference. Um, but we also know that sometimes it's hard to figure out how do you leave this conversation? <laughs> There's a little button in the bottom corner called end and you can get out of the conversation. I'm gonna stay on a little bit longer uh, to make sure that any final questions get put in here that we can see if we can help answer. And also then I will force quit it here in about a minute or so, so that you all can then exit. But before we do that, we need to have Final words from Dr. Amy oh, and yeah. final toast. I forgot, final toast. Oh, um, look at her. Oh, shoot. I, ah, words are hard. Um, because I am joined by two amazing feline veterinarians on this, I just want to say cheers to all the feline vets out there because you are in the trenches dealing with these kitty cats every single day and taking care of their pet parents. So cheers to you. Cheers. And yeah. I want to give a special call out to both Dr. Bales and to Jesse. Mm -hmm. This chat has been blowing up, mm -hmm. and if it were not for them and the entire veterinary team providing the professional responsibility, see, did it again, see, I'm there for you, um, of giving you really concrete advice, uh, we would not be where we are today. So huge, huge thank you. They are volunteering their time, everyone. I want to make sure you know this. This is something that they're doing out of the graciousness of their heart. So thank you, and toast to cheers to both of you. Cheers on that. Yes, indeed, okay. all of you.